Kampala, it is time for the worker program and you are with me Sarah Mawerere. To talk about senior citizens in Uganda, here in studio we are hosting officials from Heal the Planet. This is an organization concerned with issues to do with senior citizens. We shall get more from them. You are tuned into UBC Radio, inspiring Uganda. Solidarity forever, solidarity forever, solidarity forever, for the union makes us strong. Welcome to studio. Thank you so much. May you please introduce yourself and begin with you. I'm so excited to be at the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation. You've been partners for a decade ever since I was young, I should confess. <laughs> she's still alive and she's still serving you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really excited. Yes. So this is Ernest Chivumi Benjamin, I'm the president of Heal the Planet Global Organization. We're a non-government organization, corporated here in Uganda, and we are permitted. We also hold special consultative status with the United Nations. Our areas of interest are global peace and security, our conflict management. That's why we engage with the senior citizens in this country. And this program actually touches several countries where we've extended it. So uh, basically that's what I can say. Mm -hmm. There is another gentleman in studio who has come along with Benjamin. May you please introduce yourself? My name is Tronco Britton from Heal the Planet and I work as the public relations and we have done a lot of activities and the upcoming activity we know that it is going to be the best because we are inviting many delegates from even outside for example the chief guest vice president of Kenya is expected to arrive so it is going to bring a lot of good things for Uganda. Uh, let me go back to you, Ernest Chivombe. You are the president of Heal the Planet and uh, in your introductory remarks you've hinted on some activities that this organization does. First of all, before we go into details of whatever you do, I'd like to know about the program concerning senior citizens. It has come to the limelight that you are hosting a big event, the way the public relations officer has put it. So tell us, what is it about senior citizens? Senior citizen uh, is our organization initiative. So on 29th October 28, this forum, which will be begun as a digital social media platform, comprising of more than 200 influential personalities in this country, from political, economic, cultural, academia, religious and corporate, or celebrity angles, is going to mark two years. And this forum is not only remarkable by the decisions that I can say, voices and ideas that shape and set agenda on issues of national concern. Strong men and women are continuing not just to post, but shed true emotions of how much they should be understood from the bottom of their hearts. This is what we yearn for when the, the idea first, first began. So during this journey, we have extended to other countries to hold similar platforms with the same notion. These include Kenya, Tanzania, Burundi, Rwanda, in South Sudan. Uh, this forum comprises of people who subscribe to different political ideologies, faith and ethnicity, but with a mission of building a greater nation for now and for the future. When we hear senior, it clicks that uh, maybe you mean people who are elderly, the aged. Which categories of people in terms of age? You've mentioned um, professionals. What is the real issue in this seniority? The seniority actually uh, goes beyond uh, the age because the people who have done things contrary to their age and then you can say, oh my God, is this person the one who has done that? So the seniority will depend on the mark that you have been able to put uh, behind for your country. It can be in your expertise as a, uh, a professional, maybe you're a lecturer, maybe you're a scientist, 
you can be a successful businessman, you can be a cultural leader, religious person, you can also be an artist like musicians. So that is the scenario you're talking about. As long as you've been able to add a brick on our nation building, you are qualified to be a senior citizen according to us. And uh, be surprising that uh, we as the organization where we have senior people who are also advanced in age, but I can as well put it forward that uh, we are a youthful organization, uh, though we have some people around the world who are advanced in age. So we're spearheading this not because we are advanced in age, but because we are advanced in achievements and also our mindset. So now, what is the importance of you drawing all this seniority and professionals together? These people have a lot that should not be left untouched because there's one philosopher who said that uh, the place where there is the biggest wealth we can ever imagine is the graveyard. And I asked him why. And then he said that it's because people who have died with their dreams and visions are quite many and they've died with them they're buried in the graveyard so we don't want that to happen we want to use the ideas and the great achievements of these people when they're still living and uh, we know that from that angle they can impact our societies they can at least give a future for this country even when they still don't live and that's what we believe so since you came together, you've talked of uh, two years ago is when you started this organization? No, so the, the organization activity? started about uh, five years ago. What is two years? What is the two the years? The two years ago? is this initiative of the senior citizens. Of senior citizens. So since we are zeroing on the citizen program, for the two years since you formed or you came up with the idea or the initiative, what do you count to be your achievement? Number one, we brought these people together. The people who cannot even speak when they face each other, even when they sit with one another. But when you come on the WhatsApp groups that we have of these people, you will be surprised that these people can be able to interact and share meaningful ideas, have constructive the dialogue, constructive communication, whether they post on, on events happening in the country, they give ideas and they come from various walks of life you will be surprised so for us to be able i thought initially that they're going to exit the group one by one surprisingly they've stayed and they're those who have applied to be part of the group it's not like any other ordinary group that people just come on it no actually i've seen some of the things they discuss being implemented even in parliament being talked about in the media and this is happening not only in uganda but also in other groups that we have opened around the world so for them now to see it is gonna be a new level mm -hmm. as we mark two years mm -hmm. what are your platforms where do you disseminate information or share the information that is required or that is you are supposed to impart maybe to the younger generation much of the time we've seen that the young people especially now in the digital world that they're subscribers of the social media platforms and instead of them concentrating on things that do not benefit fit them we are choosing to reach them to those platforms apparently we have more than two million subscribers in uganda some people even believe that 10 million on the internet but uh, much of the time they're on social media platforms like instagram whatsapp facebook and twitter so where they are we disseminate that information and uh, my brother our public relations mr chonka has had an, an initiative that he has been spearheading for the young people he has opened up what we call the the Ghana Youth Parliament, but uh, it has been able to bring together a number of young people to discuss important things concerning their country. What do these people benefit as people who are sharing their knowledge, expertise, and the general membership? What do they take back? You know, the greatest thing that we can ever be proud of is peace. A society that is stable and an idea that is not utilized can be as dangerous as a nuclear weapon. When people boil of anger and they keep their anger 
inside themselves. That's the most dangerous part that we'll never desire. Who knew that after the civil war in Rwanda in the 1950s that there would be a genocide uh, 50 years later? That's when we saw fellow human beings who've been eating with, laughing with, pretending in court, killing each other. People are coming from the same country. The genocide touched the war when two million people died. We know that even in this country, the boiling people who could be maybe not satisfied on the way, maybe removing their own, you can't satisfy everyone. But when you speak out something, even if you let cry and you say, let me cry, you release that anger. We recently had a press conference in preparation of this arrangement for Senior Citizens Convention. We were at uh, Hotel Africana and we invited uh, the former Vice President, His Excellency Gilbert Bukenya. And then the one of the important things that he mentioned in that press conference that uh, I'm in this convention and I'm in the Senior Citizen platform not because I want a job, not because I want uh, uh, I want a uh, material thing, but I have two children. One is a structural engineer in the United States. Another one is a cardiologist. Every day I call upon them to come back in the country and they say that what we are seeing on YouTube, what we are seeing on, on the internet, we can come back home. He said, why? It's because we fear anything can happen. And he said that I'm joining because I want to give a future for our country. When people dialogue, when people speak, there is peace. So the benefit is that we have a situation of people who cannot fight, who cannot take arms up, who cannot go and protest on street because they know that they can be able to dialogue freely and that is what actually is one of the greatest achievements. Wow, thank you very much for that uh, wonderful information and the background that you've given to this debate. Could you please uh, tell us why I come up with such an idea of a convention? We saw that um, for a greater time, people cannot see it together. And uh, we've not given chance to those who are not working in government to speak. Their voices are not heard. The men and women have served this country and have achieved a lot, but uh, they're not in parliament anymore. Well, some are business people, either the ones who are sustaining our economy, some are artists that are selling our brand around the world. So for them not to meet, it implies that there's nothing much we can achieve out of them. And then that's when we saw that the convention, which is going to be on 29th October 2018, is very important for them. And we want to thank the government of Uganda, the Prime Minister, the State House, and uh, the Land Ministry, Minister of Gender, and uh, the partners who believe and have understood that uh, been long overdue. They've been giving us supportive documents from the Vice President, from the Parliament, from the police, from KCC. Very many supportive documents, you know, arranging this uh, takes a lot of time. I've been holding some background meetings with internal affairs, foreign affairs, other stakeholders. So uh, what I can say is that um, for them to meet is one of the greatest achievements that our organization is going to have. And uh, we have asked the United Nations and other people around the world to sub sponsor this, even in other countries, because uh, we're going to have this for more 19 countries, even in the next three years. So Uganda is the first, and then we're going to move to Egypt and some other countries around the world. Thank you to you Britain who are the <clears throat> public relations officer sorry for that is not the real title that you hold in mm. a heal the planet organization mm. you may be called maybe a communications manager um we would like now to start from the point where Ernest has stopped mm. about <clears throat> the upcoming event mm. which is the convention mm. can you share with us which activities have you set to mark the day on 29th of October is when the convention is going to happen and we expect people to come together heal the planet as you hear the name it is healing the planet healing the planet means bringing people together bringing peace togetherness and friendship when you look at uganda right now we have conflicts politically uh, not only politics but even outside politics heal the planet brings people together so that we can pray to god we can organize activities, any activity which can bring someone together. Uh, in 2017, we organized a 500 pastors re retreat and, and business 
How was it? It was pub. What um, did you achieve? Many people joined Heal the Planet, many people turned to God, and many people loved their country. Right now we are working on loving our country, bringing people together, and preaching the good of Uganda. Preaching as in gospel? Not preaching. only gospel, mm. not you politics to only. To talk about politics? The, the best of Uganda means security-wise, education-wise, even in Christ. And these are the professionals and senior citizens to talk about this? We are going to talk about this. Because including the young people, maybe. Yeah, including the young people. Because this, this, this uh, conversion is not situated for people maybe below age of 18 or what. Every person who has an idea can mm -hmm. come and attend. This, to call it senior citizens, it is because we have called a lot of senior citizens from outside the country and in Uganda here. Mm -hmm. So we call it senior citizens because of that issue. But we welcome everybody who can bring an idea, is willing to work with Heal the Planet, who is willing to bring a good impact to Uganda, who is willing to revive Uganda to the best. When is the day, if I may ask? It is 29th of October. And where is it going to be held? At Twin Towers. Yes, Office I see Prime you Minister. have the theme. I think it is going to be held under this theme. What is the theme? Reconciliation hmm. and Respect for Human Rights is the future f for Uganda. Have you invited some dignitaries, like maybe foreign missionaries, to be part of the event? We have invited a lot of people, both from government, NGOs, and uh, radio presenters, TV presenters, pastors, business people, every caliber. Mm, I would uh, attend, but I was not invited. <laughs> but uh, who is going to be the guest of honor? Maybe the president can put mm -hmm. that. President, can you throw more light the on the event? Honor and chief, and chief guest. Guest of honor and chief guest. Can you tell us about uh, the chief guest <coughs> and the guest of honor? Yeah, our chief guest, we've invited uh, His Excellency, uh, the Grand President, Yuel Kagutam Seven, and uh, we're working closer with his office and uh, his team, uh, but we expect uh, the Deputy President of Kenya, His Excellency William Ruto, I was in Nairobi, about two months ago uh, to accord uh, such invitation but of course through protocol with the foreign affairs here so um, they are arranging so William Ruto is going to be our guest of honor but chief guest remains excellency in Okagutam 7. It is such an event that is uh, sounding to be of high caliber mm. so what exactly do you hope to take away from this in terms of anything could be resources material mm. gains uh, skills networking mention some of this oh you've really mentioned them <laughs> because um it is true that networking is key actually when you meet people you can network because you don't know why your next door is going to be mm. and uh we would uh, have some of the uh, suggested activities will be the launching of the senior citizen membership card mm. uh, that we hope uh, each citizen could have so for identification for follow-up in case and then uh, some privileges if the parliament can allow if you hold such a membership card and um, signing of a peace commitment banner that mm. if you belong to the uh, UPC, if you belong to the Forum for Democratic Change or mm. the National Resistance Movement, mm. then when you sign on that banner, you are see, you are called to the peace of this country and that you are committing yourself that it will not be war, it will not be uh, conflict, but it will be democracy and dialogue peacefully. And then we hope to have uh, presentations and discussions from guests from uh, here in the country and outside the country. Uh, those have confirmed from West Africa and some of them are here in the country. Uh, they are preparing to uh, make a speech. On that day we shall have different panelists that uh, who will be uh, presenting and uh, we are still engaging a number of people from our walks of life. Uh, so such an achievement will also be, we shall come up with uh, resolutions and paper that for such to continue this is what has to be effected probably there will be an open dialogue and mm. a good clear platform between the presidency 
But if you can see different fraternities have been invited, you can imagine we've reached out to the uh, political parties, the Born Again Faith, Manufacturers Association, Uganda Law Society, the Rotary Clubs, you can see the Unaga National Teachers Association, or the Private mm. Sector Foundation, Casita, different people, you can verify such groups of people when they, this is going to be a remarkable. So is entry <coughs> free? Yeah, entrance is free. And, and exit is free. And exit is free. <laughs> Do we expect <laughs> food and, yeah. and the drinks? Yeah, we're trying to the diplomatic society. Mm. We All of them have been invited and we have also extended a hand of request to them to support mm. in arrangement because you know what it means that the budget has to be a big to even feed people and I will hope in these remaining few days that everything will be perfected and uh, we shall be able to uh, move us according to the plans. Do people expect to eat free food and drinks? Yes. would like you to make a clarification. On the same event, you will launch a card? We're thinking that uh, for recognition purposes, for purposes of uh, according a due honor or privileges that such senior citizens in the country should have uh, a membership card. Imagine if you can show up at that card when you are at the airport, when you are the park lot, when you are in public places. They say, oh, He's a senior citizen and it can be accorded respect or even in the community where they belong when they hold their village meetings or at their places of residence they can say oh there's a, a senior citizen there maybe we can go and consult in case of uh, a need be so the membership card i've been trying to seek attention of the minister of internal affairs to see how that can be but uh, it's one of the proposals to be to become members so if they become members, what does it entail to join or to have that card? It will be, of course, free of charge and they will just have to submit their names. But then there will be a sample like how you saw uh, the president launched the national ID and then he registered and uh, he displayed his national ID. So mm. probably that they could have five or ten of them for purposes of viewing. And then in the due time, the rest of the people can also get them. Free of charge? Yeah, it is because senior citizens, you don't pay to become, but what you have achieved and what you can do is what qualifies you. So there's no reason why you should pay for the card. Okay, so maybe briefly tell us how do you manage to do these things? Mm. How do you run such an association? The senior citizens forum, like I've said, and it's been uh, digital whatsapp groups like how you can see here mm -hmm. so right now mm -hmm. you see the different countries mm -hmm. in that screenshot so right now it's gonna be rare and that we shall have panelists will be visiting media houses maybe every day coming from the senior citizens we shall have debates organized mm -hmm. by senior citizens we are gonna have more activities more workshops not only this convention so that it doesn't die it keeps the fire burning. That's what I can say. So where is the convention going to be held? The conference hall, Twin Towers, office of the president, stroke prime minister. Parliament, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, me away here. Um, I'm the speaker of Uganda Youth Parliament, and I was groomed by You the Planet. The initiative of Honorable Chivumbi Benjamin is one who groomed me, and Uganda Youth Parliament is like the main parliament but strictly for youth issues so we visit schools we visit universities we visit uh, even the community we bring a debate then we can discuss those issues and take them back to the government we should love our country more because if you love your country you cannot kill if you love your country you cannot steal if you love your country you cannot speak here about it so the spirit of love which here the planet has in plenty. You and mean they cannot speak whatever goes wrong? They can they speak, feel they are but not love, no, no, no. Loving somebody doesn't mean that you cannot speak, you cannot talk bad about that person, if at all it is the truth. But loving something is, you, lo you, for you forgive. When something happens, talk about it, forgive, forget. Then you can bring a solution, what you can do. I think love is the most important thing. When you love those killers, when you love, you can't kill. So what is the message? They should love each other, they should love their country, and they should work hard. We have, uh, in fact, our programs. One of them is uh, education program. 
and then human rights, disaster, conflict management, election monitoring in several countries, climate and environmental protection, health, aid, watchdog peace, food security, energy science and technology, as well as anti-terrorism. So such activities, such programs verify some activities that we do. And uh, in terms of them, I can mention, uh, break down a few of them. We have a project for uh, sexual workers called the GOMA project. The project we thought about uh, the reason why these people should be on the streets. When you look at them, they're beautiful, young-looking ladies, but they choose to sell their bodies on the streets for a living, most of them according to. We started such an initiative to be able to curb that vice because we know it is criminal in this country, though it is still prevailing. We have an activity for refugees. Uh, we've been visiting some refugee centers in this country and different parts uh, of the country. And uh, we have we also have a children's project. Uh, recently, we've had a campaign for a toddler who was born with, I mean, two holes in his heart, and he later developed two more ones because of our project. We engage the media to raise money for that toddler and uh, uh, proudly say that the young boy is now in India for treatment. Those are some of our activities. We've started uh, some few schools like in, we have uh, in Masaja we have uh, a, a small primary school called Tumtende mm -hmm. whereby uh, these kids some of them are coming from impoverished families. They're able to receive some reasonable education. and uh, Free of charge. We can just say free of charge because at the end of the day, what the little they pay covers for their uh, eating and uh, uniforms. So how do you manage to run those activities? Do you um, get sponsorship? Every single day, even on the website, we ask people to donate. Uh, Hilldeplanet.org and uh, we've been reaching out through also membership of the organization that new members have to pay. We are not now talking about senior citizens, but we're talking about the Other organizations. Yes, general. the organization. Yeah. This is Heal the Planet. Absolutely. Some uh, individual donations, and we also keep writing proposals to uh, different people and organizations around the world. So we still need support to fulfill our agenda uh, towards the event where we may not be able to accept new new uh, registrations because of the uh, logistics and capacity that's what I can say but for now the registration is still open okay we have come to the end of this special edition the program in which we've talked about the senior citizen convention that's coming up mm. on 29th of this month october yes, 2018 Monday. and the event is to take place at the twin tower mm. which is the office of the prime minister mm. the office of the president the convention will sit only mm. a thousand people and we wish you the best in all the other activities that you do carry out yeah? mm. You just go to our website www.healtheplanet.org or you can, can you say it slowly so that a person is able to grasp it? Mm. Okay, www.healtheplanet.org I can spell Heal the planet. Yeah, mm. we are not using Heal that T but D instead. Heal mm. the planet, D. Yeah. Oh. yeah, Heal the planet. Yeah, or you can still send an email to senior citizens mm. at healtheplanet.org or you can call my number, even WhatsApp, on plus two five six seven seven three thirteen seventy five uh, sixty six mm. we want to say that we are so uh, grateful mm. madam sarah for hosting us here my pleasure at the Ghana broadcasting corporation it's been a great time that we've had an opportunity to be on the national media that is it my name is sarah mawedere till then have a good night you are tuned into UBC Radio, inspiring Uganda. Solidarity forever, solidarity forever, solidarity forever, for the union makes us strong.